Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith um, with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. So, I'm talking about heat waves. I'm talking about heat domes. When you get the jet stream wave going very, very far north and dipping down, you get this heat dome underneath the ridge of the jet stream, the crest of the wave. And normally these would be traveling waves around the planet but they're getting wavier and wavier and slowing down their, their, their phase movement. They're, they're not traveling as fast and they're getting stuck into place. And we've had this dome over lots of North America, the Eastern two thirds of North America and, um, in the last week. So um, this is the, uh, but over the whole planet, we're, 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 uh, we've got this, um, this is over the last week, red hot planet, all time, Heat records have been set all over the world um, in the past week. So here we go. Um, these are the records up in uh, North America. Okay, the red, the red is very, very hot. This is, this is baking hot. Um, so you can see this dome has just been sitting here. The jet stream will be up like this and not moving. Okay, here's the jets coming like this sort of thing. So here, you know, North America, I mean, it's very hot in these regions in general, but it, you know, it's, it's like furnace hot here over, over in these regions, okay? Um, so this is, uh, sim this is uh, maximum temperatures on July 3rd from the GFS, Global Forecast System uh, Weather Model, American model, two meters above the ground. Okay, so this article in the Washington Post by Samenow, um, has been updated throughout the week. So here we go, Ireland, Scotland, Canada, scorching Middle East, Southern California, you know, all the, so large area of heat pressure, heat pressure, high pressure, heat, heat domes, ridge of the jet stream, sweltering temperatures. So, and here's this, the article I talked about, the CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, 54 deaths they're up to. This, num these, this number is going to rise a lot more. And this number is, and lots of people have died in Ontario and other provinces, but those numbers won't come out because they don't keep accurate records. I mean, what, what you have to do is you have to get the data from all the morgues, right? You need to get the data from all the morgues you know, the daily data from all of the morgues. And what you will see is that the morgues in all of these cities, because the cities are worse because of the urban heat island effect, right? A large city like Montreal could be uh, five degrees Celsius, up to 10 degrees Celsius, five to eight or something, warmer than the rural areas outside. Same with Toronto, same with Ottawa. Larger the city, the larger the urban heat island effect. Um, so you need to, sample, get the data from all of the morgues and do the statistical analysis and you'll see spikes. You'll see a spike increasing for this heat wave. And this data will appear, um, this will appear in a while in the other provinces. Quebec has their act together and uh, they're doing it very quickly, almost real-time reporting. Uh, Northern Siberia, temperature was, this is in Fahrenheit, this is a US article. 40 degrees above normal on July 5th, over 90 degrees. Okay, so here we go. Northern Siberia, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It should be 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Just incredible. Here's some images of the temperature. This is a temperature anomaly, um, you know, over this region in Northern Siberia. Africa, the hottest temperature ever reliably measured. Some, a place in Algeria. 51.3 Celsius, 124.3 degrees. The previous high was slightly lower than this, set in 1961. Okay, um, so here we go, uh, some of the milestones, and you, I, I have a look at this article, um, and uh, so LA, Denver, all these different places, Montreal, uh, this is the highest temperature going back 147 years. So it was 36.6 .6 on July 2nd or 97.9 Fahrenheit. The most extreme midnight combination of heat and humidity. It's not just the heat, right? If you get this heat in the desert and it's dry, it doesn't affect you the same way. 
Um, Ottawa on July 1st, Canada Day. Welcome to Canada Day. Um, and in Europe, the British Isles. I mean, we get roads buckling, roofs buckling and melting. Um, Scotland, Glasgow, 31, almost 32 Celsius, almost 90 degrees. Um, and Ireland, Northern Ireland, Glasgow Science Center roof uh, melting. Eurasia, so the capital, you know, Georgia, Armenia, Southern Russian, Southern Russia. Okay, the Middle East, look at this. Now this is the, the daily low temperature was the hottest, the world's hottest low temperature ever recorded was 42.6 Celsius or 109 degrees. So at night, the temperature dropped down to this temperature. Okay, didn't, you know, this is just, this type of thing wreaks havoc on our bodies. Um, without air conditioning, we're, we're in, in deep trouble. Um, there's a huge marketing opportunity for somebody to come up with a, uh, just, put, just put little tubes through, um, weave them into a fabric, have a little pump, solar, little solar panel on the outside, and you want to circulate a little chiller, maybe a thermoelectric cooler or something, uh, running off the solar power, and you want to you want to cool and circulate water in a suit, and you just wear this suit, and uh, you know you wear it to sleep, you wear it outside. It's like your own por portable air conditioning system for your body in order to survive, you know, wet bulb temperatures of minus thirty uh, of uh, sorry thirty five Celsius. Okay, Pakistan, all these different places setting huge huge records. Okay, okay, so it's just massive. Um, temperatures. Now, you know, you can look at the uh, spatial nature of this. Um, this is the, this is now Friday, July 6th at two meter temperature. Okay, and um, what you can see is the heat's still there, but it's, it's backed off a bit. Okay, uh, climate reanalyzer here, you can look at different parts of the world just by clicking on this. Okay, so uh, we can look at the jet streams, for example. Okay, and here we go. Here's the jet stream. This is the ridge here. So it, this is where all the heat is underneath here. Um, <coughs> now there's other implications from all of this heat. Okay, so let's have a look at them. This is my, um, this is my Facebook page. Um, and uh, let's just have a look at some of the things that I've been posting. The Munster heat domes and the, the records. Okay, uh, we'll go back down, we'll go down a bit. Okay, so here we go. Um, heat, why do heat waves make ozone pollution so much worse? Okay, uh, ozone is great in the stratosphere. It blocks the ultraviolet, um, it, it allows life to flourish at the surface. The problem with ozone is that, and, you, and you've all smelt, oh, oh, you've all, you've all smelt ozone or it, it, it doesn't really, it, it has, if you have an electrical short, you know, sparks and you can smell this, um, it's ozone that you're, that, that is, re, that is giving you that smell. Um, that's, you know, like your toaster goes on the fritz and you just smell, apart from burnt toast, you smell this, uh, um, you can smell this, this high ozone from electrical sparking because the sparking breaks down oxygen, the free oxygen atoms go and attach to an oxygen molecule, you get, so you get instead of O2, the normal state of oxygen, you get O3, you get that smell. So ozone at the surface though is bad news, okay? Um, high concentrations, it can affect your, the linings of your lungs, it can be hard to breathe. Um, in high concentrations at the surface, it can even kill you. It, 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 it can kill and stunt vegetation growth. Um, so when it gets super, super hot, we've got these nitrous oxides coming from automobile exhaust, for example, in complete combustion. And when the sun is beating down, it breaks these molecules apart, breaks down the oxygen, you get ozone produced, and uh, it, can, it can, can be a big factor in respiration problems in, in heat waves. Now, 
this is something um, that you might not have known about. Climate change is making it harder for couples to conceive. Okay, first of all, when it's crazy hot, um, you know, people are wearing a lot less. So you might think that, uh, that uh, you know, there's a lot more sex going on, basically. But, you know, people just, they can't be bothered with sex when it's too hot, right? Oh, stay away from me, you know, and, and this is anecdotal, you know, just talk to friends or, you know, uh, it, it's just, so, so, but not only that, when it's too hot, the sperm mobility decreases significantly. So when we have very, very cold winters in the Northern Hemisphere, about nine months later, there's a spike, there's spikes in the birth rate. But when we have a, you know, come take out, go f take this heat wave in North America, around the world and go out nine months and you will see a huge dip in birth rates nine months from, from the heat wave. Okay, um, so it's a two factors. First of all, you know, people aren't interested in coupling, conceiving, um, you know, sex when it's just way too hot. Um, you know, stay away from me. Oh, you're too hot. You know, don't come near me. Um, and sperm mobility, you know, it's the guys. The mobility of those little guys um, is really slowed down, really hindered, and um, it, uh, it really nixes the, uh, reduces the probability of, of, uh, of uh, fertilizing an egg. Okay. Um, there's other stuff here. Paul Ehrlich. Uh, Collapse of civilization, a near certainty within decade. I mean, okay, so this is the thunderstorms. Um, Radar Scope is an excellent app on the iPhone. And this was a cold front coming towards Ottawa with the storms and it cut the temperature. Temperature was about 35 degrees. This passed, we dropped the five, six, seven degrees down to, uh, you know, about 30, 28 or so, and then the temperature climbed back up. Most of, it, most of it missed us in Ottawa and went further north of us. Um, and what else do we have? Okay, here, you know, heat-related deaths seem concentrated in Quebec, but there's more to the story. Yeah, there's a lot more to the story. This is a story that was talking about, let me just click on this link because this is the, I believe this is the one that was I, it, I'm talking about the air conditioning numbers in different locations. So let's have a look here. Um, you know, are Quebecers more vulnerable to extreme temperatures? Well, we're all used to certain climate conditions, certain weather, right? And when there's a rapid increase of temperature, you know, that's when it hits us. So because people live at different latitudes and get different weather patterns and climate, um, you know, then it's going to be a different experience in different places. Okay, so the first thing is that they have an extreme heat plan and health officials work with first responders in emergency rooms. They quickly track down heat related illnesses and deaths. So they get a number very, very quickly. In Ontario, it takes much, much longer. It, they, in Ontario, it'll be like a month, right? Um, not even the number, we don't tie the emergency department visits to uh, the heat wave. The data won't be released until August. So Ontario numbers on heat deaths from these heat waves um, won't come out till August. So it's not that they're not happening and, or people in other provinces are more resilient. Now, AC is a big factor, okay? The elderly, the young, those with chronic diseases, et cetera. Air, AC is the difference between life and death for these populations. Okay, you're not going to last long at 46. There we go. 60% of the city's households in Montreal have AC, whether it be a window unit or central air. In some neighborhoods, it's 40%. Others, it's 80 to 90%. Most vulnerable people live in the hottest downtown zones, least access to air conditioning. Toronto is different. In Toronto, a survey in 2010 said 80... 85% of Toronto residents have access to air conditioning. Okay, um, even in the worst uh, neighborhoods with the least number of air conditioned households, it was still 77%. So there you go. And uh, so anyway, uh, thanks for listening to these videos.